This is how I fabricate a hiramasa for sushi at the Land and Water Company. This hiramasa we've gotten from Catalina Offshore Products and is aquaculture raised in Baja, California and part of our projects here in San Diego to serve sustainable seafood. I'm gonna use my Deba thing on the other side. Just behind the head and just in front of where the spine starts, you'll find a little soft spot where the knife can slide straight through without any interruption and again, just touch to the vertebrae. And with minimal effort, the head of the fish will lightly twist off. And you'll always start on the belly side of the fish as we are trained, especially for sushi. And the knife is going to break the skin and then you're going to slowly pull the knife towards you in a drawing motion. And as you pull that knife back, you're gonna feel it right along the spine, the ribs of the fish, scalpeling along not to disturb or waste any of the meat. The bones from the cage of the fish running here on the shoulder where it separates the top right shoulder from the bottom left shoulder. I like to insert my deba here and then open the fish here from head towards the tail. Seeing the bones here gives you a very clear guideline of how to use your knife to pull back towards you. The single bevel of the deva gives you one side that's perfectly flat. So as you push the knife forward and pull it back towards you, as you pull the knife towards you, the beveled side is gonna pull the blade snug and closest to the bones. This knife is specifically designed for butchering fish in this way, and it gives us the maximum yield and disturbs the flesh the least amount. I'm gonna lift the tail, and I'm gonna slide my deva back towards the head of the fish. So we're going against the grain of the bones. It's important here that you use the knife going tail to head so that you're not cutting with the grain of the fish or with the bones, you're cutting against them. This creates a cleaner cut and it allows you to slice through the rib bones with minimum resistance. And we finally get the top filet up and off of the fish. Now we're gonna continue on and we're gonna remove the cage. We're gonna start again on the belly and we're gonna go right underneath the belly fin and we're gonna just stay as close to the bones as possible and we're gonna release the ribs off of the filet. Now we're gonna flip the fish over and now we're going to use our knife again, starting at the head of the fish. And we're just gonna trace along the top of the fins and the skeleton and we're gonna break the skin and we're gonna then release the shoulder of the bones from the rest of the filet. And now we're just gonna go through with the tip of the knife and release the spine and again, swipe through the bones along the belly. Here I'm scraping with a spoon to remove any meat that we can. This is perfect for negihama, multiple sushi applications, as well as this is the most nutrient rich part of the fish. And we can reserve that skeleton for char grilling, for soups, for stocks, for anything else you'd like. The first step in quartering it here is we're gonna remove the comma or what is called the collar of the fish. We're gonna go in through the belly and we're gonna come up across and finish on the shoulder and make a clean swipe. This flesh is some of the most succulent on the fish that's often discarded. Here on the cross section of the comma, you can see that there's a ton of toro, there's a ton of fat, there's a high oil content. Along the lateral line here down the center of this filet is now where we're gonna draw our knife to cut into quarters. This is the shoulder of the fish. And then here, this is the belly of the fish. Now we're here on the belly. These rib bones are tools that you can use to help you clean the fish more efficiently. You put the knife in upside down and pull towards you and it will separate the rib bones from what are spinal bones on the center of the fish. Once you've separated those, now you can use those as guidelines and run your deba underneath the rib bones down towards the belly, pressing up onto the bones so that you only remove bone and sinew and not any of the flesh. Now there's one last segment here where there are bones in this species that are within the bloodline. So we're gonna swipe off the bloodline and the rest of these lateral bones. And we will now have two clean fillets. We'll have the top shoulder and we'll have the bottom belly fillet. So now here I'm switching knives to my Yunagi. It's very important that you lubricate the cutting edge of your Yunagi. And we do this by dipping the tip into water and then gently tapping the handle on the cutting board. The water traces the cutting edge of the Yunagi all the way to the foot of the knife and will drip off of the bottom. And here I skin it from tail to shoulder. This is a belly filet. And between the skin and the flesh is this very delicate piece of silver skin. That silver skin is a very thin layer of fat, and that layer of fat is very important to the mouthfeel, to the overall experience, sashimi or nigiri with the sushi. And it also shows that our knives are sharp and we have a certain amount of chef pride in our butchery skills. 
here as we prepare the shoulder of the filet for sashimi, any extra imperfections will be removed. There's three different types of cuts that we're gonna go over here. The first one is the most traditional. This is a straight pull sashimi block cut. This is a cut you'll see on any big fish that will allow you to have a filet of the right size in order to create this cut. This is a drawn or pulling slice, also for sashimi presentation. This longer drawn out slice gives more surface area, a lighter mouthfeel, a thinner texture. You have sliced open more of the individual proteins of this flesh and so it will allow you to have a more flavorful bite. The final cut here we're doing is one that is usually for whitefish, for very thin halibut, for thin tie snappers, for breams. We're gonna slice that eye right in half and we're gonna scalp this filet down into a lower profile so when we go in to do a very paper thin slice, we have a little less surface area and we have a little tighter flesh that will allow us to create a thin, more perfect slice. Here I've taken those slices and shingled them on the cutting board and have rolled them into a rose, which is a traditional sushi preparation. Seeing the way the grain of the flesh is running will tell you where and how to cut and you always want to cut against the grain. If you cut with the grain, the flesh will unfold and will ripple against your knife. If you're cutting against the grain, it has a surface tension that will withstand the entry of the blade and the cutting edge into the flesh. So it will create a perfect cut and not a mangled cut along the belly of the filet. This segment closest to the stomach is the toro of the hiramasa, or the absolute pure and fattest part of the filet. So here you can see I've left the entire filet intact, including the bloodline. The bloodline is bright and red and shows that the fish is fresh and clean and also left the silver skin in place. So you can see that this is a belly slice and that there is an added layer of fat into the fish. We've left the bloodline on, which is traditional. There's no need to waste any of the fish. And the bloodline here is going to add to the flavor. It's gonna add depth and texture. And it's important when you go out and are looking for fish for yourself that you see the bloodline and that you can see that it's bright and that it's red, that it has not been oxidized or discolored in any way. It's another way to be able to look at a fish and visually see how fresh the fish is.